I can be a stripper live with Chanel right now, recording artist uh, Young Money is on the line. How are you? Hi, how are you? <laughs> we are wonderful, very excited. <laughs> yes, that, that was a sound, banging song, song Chanel. Good. That was a banging <laughs> joint right there, man. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. That's for all the and 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 can I tell you why I wrote that song? Please. Mm-hmm. So you know, I'm 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 in Atlanta. I'm based out of Atlanta, and I just hear so many records that just glorify strippers. And there's nothing wrong with strippers. I, I kudos to y'all. Y'all getting it. But there's so many women out there that that don't strip, but nobody's talking about them. Nobody's mentioning them. And I just felt like you know. If, if 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 you have a boyfriend, if you're a woman, you have a boyfriend or or, or or a husband, and you feel like you're just as fly or just as sexy as as the girls in the club, then there needs to be that record for you. So I I did that. I wrote that song for all my ladies out there who aren't in the club because I don't think there's a song mm-hmm. out there right now for them. Dope. So that that was my approach. And, and that was that a dope is approach. Success. And Super it was a dope success. Approach. Yeah. <laughs> and it was a Yeah, and I feel like because... men and men and women can both, you know, like they can, they can both love that record. Like men love it cuz oh, ooh, I'm getting I'm getting a special treatment. <laughs> and then women right. can also love it because it's like, yeah, this is my song. I'm gonna when he come home tonight, I got him. <laughs> you know. So right. I'm going I'm to tell you something crazy, and, and I, oh, I know you're about to start the interview. I'm going to tell you real quick. That's exactly <laughs> how that just made me feel. Like, that made a brother <laughs> feel special and not like no trick in the club, yo. Right. I'll, that mm-hmm. that makes you feel like, yo, your girl is doing something special for you when you get home, you know what I'm saying? And you're right. There has to be a balance. Everybody can't throw ones and in, in money at every mm-hmm. girl in the, in the club, you know what I mean? Some brother's like, yo... When I get home, I know it's on. She there. You know what I'm saying? So right. dope approach. Hey, you know what? Dope, dope subject matter, for me. real. Just throw them ones on me so I can go get my nails yeah. and I can get my nails <laughs> <real> Yeah. <laughs> Keep it in the household. <laughs> right. That's what's up. <laughs> no, that's dope. Role play. Yeah. <laughs> that's what's up. I, I like that record. I like that joint. And um, it Thank was just you. effortless. The vocals. Um, definitely on point. Um, it, it, again, like I mentioned, it's just such an a, a honor, and we're humbled to have you on the line. You've done so much in the industry, um, a lot that people may not even be familiar with, and we won't get a chance to probably get into all of it, but we want to definitely highlight you know, some of it if we can with you while we have you on the line. Um, so now you have a, such an extensive background in dance and theater and just – um, classically trained, and um, can you kind of let us know about your first opportunity with the main the music industry and how that came about? Hmm. My, well, my very very first. Mm, let's see, the very very first one I want to tell y'all about. <laughs> it's probably. <laughs> um, well, you know, I I, I was doing I I did everything because. Mm-hmm. When I was trained, I was trained in theater. But to be in musical theater, you have to be able to do all things. You can't just act. You can't just dance, and you can't just sing. You have to be able to do all things. So I've always done it all because you know if if you're going to be an artist, then you want people. You want to have a piece of you in every part of your artistry, and you know a lot of artists are puppets, and they get their songs written for them, their choreography built, their video concepts made, and they have nothing to do with any of that. They're they're just Mm -hmm. the puppet. And I just couldn't find myself being that type of artist. Like, if I write a song, then I have a vision for it from the time that I wrote it. And, um, you know, I just i have always just been involved in every aspect. So as a dancer, um, I danced on tour for a bunch of different artists from Sierra, Neo, 
even the game. That was probably the scariest dancing job I ever had. <laughs> but <laughs> I've danced for a lot of people. But while I was on the road with them, I just, um, and you know what? I'm, I just I call Zaytoven because I, we're gonna, we're going to get to that a little bit later in the interview. But I'm gonna put him on. I'm gonna um, connect him in because I want him to talk too because we have a project coming out. So wow, um, nice. Let All me right. just connect him in. Hold on, real quick. Okay. <laughs> Dope. <laughs> okay, Zay, you there? Zaytoven. Yo, what up? What's okay, cool. right. I'm in the I'm in the <laughs> middle of talking about something, and we're gonna get to you in a second. Okay. So, um, yeah, I just I I I was writing while I was on the road for all the artists that I was on the road with, and it was the the perfect opportunity for for a person who had no credit, had no experience, but I had these embedded relationships. So I would play my music for people like Neo, which I got a, a song on his album, and then I play music for Wayne and ended up writing four songs on his Rebirth album. So I used my dancing capabilities to build relationships on the songwriting tip. And then I was able to turn the situation with me writing for Wayne into an opportunity for me to to sign to his label as an artist because he was in the process of building Young Money. And he was like, yo, you're, you're incredible. Like, why are you selling your songs to everybody else? He was like, do that here. Like, I'm, I'm starting this company. I want you to be a part of it. So that's kind of how, you know, the whole Chanel Young Money kind of came about. Amazing. I love the, the leveraging and the, the building and getting in the door and, and, you know, just building those relationships to where, you know, you're being asked now, hey, come to this label. That's that's awesome to, to build that up. Um I, I definitely want to. You have Zaytoven on the line, and that's that's dope, by the way. <laughs> Thanks that's, for joining us. That's my partner in crime right now. <laughs> oh, man, that's a suck. I, I I just riding home was just listening to Preach by Young Dolph. <laughs> man, that's like my record. <laughs> so he actually produced the stripper record that you guys just played, and we have a mm. project coming out called Eighty Eight Keys. It's coming out this month in June, nice. and it's a collaboration because you know Zay is is the the key to the trap. Like he, mm-hmm. ho- like he he all these young producers that came up underneath him, and you know his style is 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 that. And then my style is more pop. You know I fuse a lot of different genres in my stuff. So we decided to come together and fuse the two worlds and come up with something dope and new and fresh. So the eighty eight keys coming out in June. Is is gonna be that? Yeah. Nice. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. Did you um now how are, are you guys gonna look to maybe do some um releasing of some music videos as well with this project or have you already worked on the video for the um I can be a stripper? We are uh, working on that now. Uh, we're shooting that this month, so it'll probably come right when the the actual project drops. So you'll get a dope ass visual and oops, sorry, I didn't mean to cuss. A no, you you can do that. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> you'll get a dope visual with the project, and then we're we're shooting probably a vi- a visual for every song, just you know to keep keep our fans satisfied. Yeah, that's dope. That's what's up. That's a good look. That really is. Um, so it was you you going um, full force now with. And not that you hadn't been going full force, but with you putting out this project now, are you going to be looking to open open with um, getting other artists? Are other artists going to be featured that you know of on this project with you and Zaytoven? Um, we're doing. We we have a few. We um actually the remix to the strip. I can be a stripper song with T Pain, and then oh, um, oh. we have <laughs> yeah. You know he's the king of. The, of the strip, the strip right? Movement. So, you know, when it, you know, Zay was like, you know, what are we gonna do to make, this, we're gonna put this record out, and we're gonna keep this thing going. Like, who, who can we get? And I was like, I think T Pain would probably be perfect. And he actually came to a, a listening session that we did, and he loved the record, and he got on it. So we, we got that in our back pocket. That's coming out soon. That's 
Nice. I mean, you got a, a, a lot of stuff. June is a big month uh, for you right now, and this is amazing. <laughs> so mm-hmm. this is dope. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to ask you, I want to get um, do a, another sentimental moment with you, and um, and I hope that I'm not cutting into to you at Beethoven's time right now. Uh, can mm-hmm. you tell me what it, it felt like the first time when you heard yourself uh, on the radio or just heard your, heard your song that you wrote on the radio? What was that like for you um, when at that time when you first heard yourself? Um... I think I was probably at the point where I was like, when is this going to happen? So I really wish I had that, like, because I, I always remember Beyonce and, well, Destiny's Child, when they said the first time they heard themselves on the radio, they were screaming up and down. And I was like, oh, I want that to happen to me. I want to hear myself. <laughs> and just get, that didn't happen like that. For me, I was like, finally, damn it. I don't know, working my ass off. <laughs> And finally, my song is on the radio, you know, because, you know, with, I, I've, I've learned a lot working working with Beethoven because he he works outside of thinking about a label or thinking about a whole team of people pushing and helping you get your stuff done. Like, he works in a way where it's like, you know, it's you, and you got to get out there in them clubs, and you got to get out there in them streets and push yourself. So, but a lot. For the last year some change, I've been in Atlanta grinding and, you know, just doing the doing the work that a label would do for some of these artists. And so when I finally heard my record on the radio, I was like, I deserve that. And mm-hmm. I've been out here grinding like a nigga, basically. <laughs> Straight yeah. up, right. <laughs> Like and you know, like they, they call me all the time. They be calling me every day, every night. Like, what you doing? Where you? What, we going out? We going here? We going here? And I'll just be like, <laughs> I gotta do my hair. I gotta, I gotta right. get my makeup right. Exactly. <laughs> and he's like, exactly. well, and if you gonna do this, if you gonna do this, if we're gonna do this, then you gotta be out here in these streets. So I've learned a lot being independent, um, independent, but on a label because. Um, the same thing with Wayne, like he he gives all of us on the label a chance to be our own boss and and to run our own ship. So it's a mm-hmm. it's a gift and a curse because you don't have, you know, the big the big machine behind you pushing everything that you do. Mm-hmm. You have to do the work yourself. And a lot of people look at Nikki and they look at Drake like because um, I get it all the time on my Instagram and on my Twitter, like, why they ain't doing this and why they ain't doing that? And I'm like, do y'all know that every artist that, from Tyga, Drake, Nicki, Wayne, they all mm-hmm. were the were the captain of their ship. And then once mm-hmm. once that reaches a certain height, that's when your label kicks in. So it's not like it was back in the day when, you just get signed and the label just does everything. Like you have to do the work yourself. Mm-hmm. So right. I know that's a whole mouthful. No, that's, that's, that's excellent. And thank you for sharing that with these artists, upcoming artists that they need to know there's definitely much more behind the smoke and mirrors and just know that there's, you know, there's some work that has to be put in and, um, Zaytoven, um, I know he's still on the line. I want to ask you, yeah, since, since we have you, um, this is a treat, by the way. Thank you for coming on. <laughs> oh, no problem. Um, <laughs> uh, can I ask you and just and go back with you? When was your the first time that you actually had an opportunity to get your um, production put out there? And um, how do you feel about the direction of, of where music is going today? Uh, my first time would have to be uh, So Icy, Gucci Man, and Young Jeezy. First time I heard it on the radio. And I was just crazy, you know, it blew my mind because I never really got in this music thinking that I'm going to be a music producer or none of that. I was just doing it because mm-hmm. I enjoyed doing it. So when the song caught on, it was like the song of the year, it just blew my mind. So that's when I, I, I really started looking at music different then. I started looking at it from like, okay, wait a minute, this could actually be my job, for real. Mm-hmm. So, 
you know, mm-hmm. so we, of course, you know, that was that was mind blowing for me. And where do I think music is going right now? I really, I'm not even sure, man. It's so, it's moving so light speed that you know it's so technical right now. Everything is, is done with technology. I think the, mm-hmm. the soul is on out of the music because everything is done so electronically. It don't even have to be a a good singer anymore. You don't have to be a great producer, none of that. We got like computers really doing it for us now, so right. it's hard to right. see where where music is going right now. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Like I think one of the reasons that Ken Chanel doing a project that we are we doing right now is because the kids like <clears throat> as far as R and B they don't really take to really R and B as much now. All the rappers are singing and all the singers rap. So it's like, exactly. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, it, it's it's so crazy to hear you guys saying, you know, uh, what you're saying. Not even crazy, just true, you know. And uh, we're glad that you're saying it because we have a lot of young people that listen to us every Wednesday. Of course, aspiring artists. I'm so happy that Chanel told people like, listen, because uh, I, I actually um, I've had conversations with Gutter Gutter before. Um, I actually met him. When he was in Squad Up uh, with Kid Kid wow. and Young Yo and all these cats, so I met him a while back. So he's been grinding for a long time, and um, he was saying the same thing. You know, people always come up and like, "Why are they not doing this for you?" And and they don't understand. Like, it's different now. You know what I'm saying? You have to get out there, do the leg work. It's not easy. You got everybody trying to sound the same. You're trying to break through. And even though y'all with this big legendary camp. With with all these big artists, you know, everybody has to hold their own like they did. Like you just said, Wayne and all these guys did. One thing I wanted to ask um, Chanel is, you know, being a female and understanding that you have so many talents, like dance, singing, uh, rapping, do you feel that there's a way that, and I guess it could be with this project that you're working on now with Zaytoven, that you can actually just break through and really show people, like, listen, I'm like a well-rounded entertainer, period. You know, because I always looked at you and your sister and was like, these girls done did it all, especially when I, you know, read up on it. It's like, wow, they got a lot of talent. Do you, Are you going to show people everything you can regarding this project? I, I definitely am, and I'm, and, and I just, I'm smarter now than I was before. Like before, when I used to put out music, I just put it out because that's what I loved and that's what I wanted to do. But that's, that's what you learn with being the captain of your own ship. You got to learn how people can receive something, and sometimes they can't take it all at once. You got to kind of right. give them a little bit, then give them a little bit more. No doubt. But I feel like this, and 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 I don't mean to disrespect nobody when I say this. But I feel like I like where music is for for me mm-hmm. because it's so open to be talented and blow people's minds because there's so much meteorocracy happening that the right. door is wide open to be just an, an incredible artist and blow people's minds. That that <laughs> that is one thing that'll never change. Like if you're if you're amazing and you get the platform to show people you're amazing, it'll blow people's minds because they're so used to this this level that music is at right now. Where it's kind of like everything kind of sounds the same, everything kind of feels yeah. the same. So once I get the platform that I am owed. And I say that because you got to say that to yourself. And and I'm speaking to the other artists out there that are coming up. You've got to claim what, what it is that you want or what it is you feel like you deserve. Don't tiptoe around yes. that. You can be humble. You can be humble, but you have to be able to claim what you feel like you deserve because nobody's going to give it to you. So when right. I say the platform that I deserve, once I get that platform, it's a wrap. <laughs> it's a wrap. Mm. That's what I'm talking and about. Y'all owe Chanel out there. Stop playing like y'all don't owe <laughs> Chanel out there, man. No, We've I been seeing Chanel do her me. thing. Nah. <laughs> if she don't want to say it, I'm going to say it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I, It's funny because we follow Young Money since, you know, you guys have came through. You've been there. And a lot of people don't know the, the, the back process of songwriting for people, you know what I'm saying, doing the different things. They only see, oh, when's she going to get her shot? Well, 
she's been doing her thing for a minute, you know what I'm saying? And now that's why she's able to say, I'm old this, the pen's been to the pad, lyrics have been published, you know what I'm saying? Songs have been written, different things of that nature. I'm actually, uh, I'm, I'm so happy that you and Zaytoven, um, you know, are together. Me, I'm a big fan of Zaytoven's. I have my own production company. We didn't produce for a lot of, um, you know, different people trying to get our stuff up there. And I never forget, um, I know a dude named Rasheed Jones out of it, uh, Atlanta. He used to live in Orlando, but he told me the story about Zaytoven and what Zaytoven told him one day. He's a singer, and he was just like, mm-hmm. yo, the dude was like, man, you know, he told me that you told him. He was like, man, listen, you you, you got to do this because you love doing it, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, eventually exactly. your time is coming, but you you know what you got to hustle for. You know what you got to grind for. Everybody know that. But do you love yep. doing this? You know what I'm exactly. saying? When, exactly, man. When he told me, you know, you told him that, I was like, you know, that's exactly how I think. I'm not putting any pressure as far as, oh, this year we got a buck, but. We grinding yeah, like that, yeah. but at the same time, we loving it as well, you know? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Everybody say that, like, man, if I don't do it this year, man, I'm just going to quit. It's like, well, you got to do this if you know for a fact that you might not get a, a, ever make a dollar off of it. It's just something that you love to do. It's a part of your life. So that's the biggest thing. You got to love to do this. Nah, that, mm-hmm. that, that's uh it's exceptional, man. I I, I just want to know from you guys collaborating now, and you you you're about to fuse some genres. If I'm hearing Chanel right, you know, with the pop, you know, with Zaytoven sound. Um, are you guys looking at this like because it's such a mediocrity going on regarding music that you're saying, you know what, this project we are gonna shake some things up. It ain't going to sound like what everybody think it's going to sound like. We actually going to have them saying, oh, shit, this is a Tobin and Chanel doing this? Or it's going to always have those elements that these people say, oh, yeah, that's familiar. Well, that was one of my main reasons for doing uh, the project with Chanel. Because I know people don't know me for R&B music. I did one R&B song, and that was Usher Papers. <clears throat> and, mm-hmm. you know, and it's probably one of my biggest songs. It went number one faster than all his other songs went number one. But people don't really <clears throat> come to me for R&B music. They come to me for, you know, club, rap, you know, hard for music. So right. I said, man, let me get somebody I know that's writing these songs, that can sing, that can get to the platform. To show these folks that I can do this, you know, I can do that type of music as well. So people respect me in that, in, you know, in that manner. So I got with Chanel, and I told her, I don't want to just do regular R&B. I want to do something that all these knuckleheads that love my music, when they hear this, it's gonna be like it's gonna be something new for them. So mm-hmm. you know, we both had we had we both had to bend a little bit, meet in the middle, but I think we got something special. We damn nice. sure had to bend a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we had to bend a little bit. You know, I don't do what she do, and she don't do what I do. Yo, know, some of the <laughs> sessions was when we were pulling each other's teeth. I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. He's like, yeah. And then he was like, no, I don't want it to sound like that. I'm like, yes, it got to sound like that. So, no, no. <laughs> I mean, but that's it, 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 it. what we did, what we came up with is, is really dope. We've been working on it for... You know, we we didn't rush the project. Like we've been working on it probably since like this time last year, and um, mm. you know, just letting it come naturally. Nice. Like some songs we scratched, mm-hmm. some songs we were like, yeah, this is it. But um, for me, you know, I'm 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 always being. I'm in. I'm I'm on a label that's predominantly rap. So. For, for me, I was I was the black sheep. I was the weirdo. Everybody was like, "Oh my God, she got that thing hanging out her out her nose. She does these weird things. She dances and she flips and she turns and she she's a contortionist." <laughs> like it was just like I was a super weirdo, and it was just it was just a good idea to to bring us both together so that my world can understand his world and his world can understand mine. 
Nah, man, that's so dope, man. I can't wait to hear it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hopefully, me and Onyx will come to Atlanta and probably get like a private listening session or something, man. I want to hear <laughs> these records so I could go out like, yo, y'all don't even know what y'all the miss it. Yeah. got coming. <laughs> that's right. That's a good yeah, idea. It's, it's you guys going to have a. Yeah, you're going to do, like, a listening session or anything prior to? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. A, a bunch of shows, you know. Um, you know, we, we're going to put... Once we release it, we'll we'll be traveling and, and promoting the project. So that'll be nice. that'll be fun, too, just to see the crowd, the, the different types of crowds that'll come out see that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's nice. Yep. Can I... Um, I want to ask both of you, um, and then uh, because, definitely because, like you said, two different worlds, two different, um, you know, male, female, woman, man. <laughs> what are the most, what was, or what is the most challenging thing for you, or what was the most challenging thing for you in the industry? I love to ask artists that because there's so many obstacles that you can face as you're trying to, to progress, um, you know, whether it be financially or whether it just be personal or finding that balance or even just the business itself, it can be, um, you know, just there's a lot to it <laughs> that people don't know, and you guys kind okay. of touched on that a little bit. So what's what's one I'm thing that you say, can say? I'll say the two things for me. Boy, woo. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, <laughs> acting independent, acting independent in, in a predominantly – like rap community or you know because the fan base for young money is they they, they're they're rap lovers first so um there's a lot of things that you got to do independently that i'm competing with dope boys so Mm -hmm. i don't i don't i'm not a dope girl i don't sell no weight i don't you know i don't do that (laughs) so like i don't the kind of like even even with radio, like you know, all my radio um, connections and all my radio support is based off of my relationships and you know my my fun my own personal funding. But you know, a lot of what I, what I'm what I'm competing with are rappers that used to trap or still do. So mm-hmm. you know, there's a whole other type of money that they they can come in and knock you off the totem pole. With, right, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. So mm-hmm. it's that. And then two is being a woman in this business and being serious about your craft and being able to work with people and they take you serious is mm-hmm. really hard. And mm-hmm. that was the one thing that I loved about Zaytoven was when I came in and we worked, we worked, we had fun and we worked and there was a respect level there that, you know, sometimes you don't get as a woman. There's, like, a lot of producers out there that are working with women because they feel like, okay, she's going to slip up and I'm going to be able to hit. You know, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? <laughs> or, yeah. um, you know, taking advantage of these, of these female artists that are are young, are, are just starting off. And, you know, so it's it's hard as a, as a woman in the business to just be taken serious. And, and you know, if you look at radio right now, you what other songs other than Beyonce and Rihanna do you hear? Mm-hmm. Right. I might hear a little Nashe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I'll be right, talking about that a lot. You're right. Mm-hmm. You don't get that. So to have uh, Zay and his team, he has a whole team that just have supported me and have have uh, let me come in, and just everybody's just dope, and and we have fun. And we work, we play, and we just get the job done. And it's hard to find producers, record label execs, any radio people that are like that. That's right. So that was my answer. Zay, you have problems with women in the business as a man? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know what? Not, not really. My biggest thing was... Um, I think my biggest thing was, was with the with the labels. I felt like I always felt like my music wasn't good enough. That's one of the reasons why I did everything so independent, or I had to, you know, get it out the mud. Or every time you hear a big song from Zaytoven, it's from a guy like Dolph or Migos or somebody you never heard before. 
at the time is because, like, you know how the labels, you know, you send music in and they don't really get your music. They don't understand. I don't think they ever understood my music, so I would get frustrated. Like, I just sent them all my best beats. I don't never get no return calls or, you know, maybe they don't, my stuff ain't good enough. They don't like it. So I had to go back to the mm-hmm. drum board and say, let me go find an artist that's around the way that I think that's the truth and then spend all my time and effort in trying to make them hot. So that was, like, really one of my biggest, you know, biggest struggles, but it turned out to be, you know, the best thing for me. It turned out to be a blessing because that's how I was, I'm, I've was. i been able to stay so relevant for so long, you know, doing this music is because I know how to spot, you know, somebody that got the gift, the real gift, and, you know, spend my time and my talent to work with them, you know what I mean, so they, you know, until they blow up. And it brings me just right back on top again, so... No. Other than that, though, everything else is smooth up. <laughs> That's dope. I love having it. Man, I tell you what, <laughs> man. Dope. I'm so glad to I'm hear that. I'm, I'm so me glad too. to hear that shit, man. Like, you guys just both, because it's funny. You guys are talking to us, but we're, like, aspiring to do what you're doing. Like, I mm-hmm. have my production team. <laughs> Onyx is a singer-songwriter. You know what I'm saying? So, to hear what y'all are saying... We're going through that type of stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like, like when Zay is like, yeah. "Yo, send best beats out to the label." <laughs> I remember right. people like, "Yo, if the labels don't pick that, they crazy." I can hear so yeah, and so and so and so, and, you know. And then <laughs> nothing never happens, you know what I'm saying? And then the next thing you know, uh, like I was saying earlier, we let one of those tracks go to a dude that wrote a book. Um, the other, he wrote a book. He's a guy out of Philly, wrote a book called Buck, and he did a soundtrack to the book, and he took one of these beats that everybody used to say, yo, that shit is going to be on a movie or something, da 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 Well, he took it, yeah. and they just premiered it on Revolt TV today, because he went out and, and did a video right in the Baltimore riots, like mm-hmm. smack dab in the Baltimore riots, and Revolt TV was like, yo, we got to premiere that video. So it's like, oh shit, look at how stuff happens when you just yeah. work with people that want to work with people. You know what I'm saying? So just yeah, hearing that mm-hmm. Beethoven went through that as well, that that that's a blessing for me to hear because a lot of our track, where we got the track on Saha, same thing. Everybody's like, yo, somebody going to love that. And it was Saha, just jumped on it, put it on YouTube, and it was like, yo, did you hear you? Yo, that's great. Same thing happened yeah, with yeah. all the guys basically that we produced for, except for like Wu Tang. Like they like seeked us out and was like, "Yo, we need like three tracks." But I'm so glad I heard that right there because I could go back and tell the team, like, "Look, man, every time we waiting for like a label to hit us, back, it really ain't where it's at all the time. Let's you work can't. with these people that want to work with us." Exactly, and I always did it just like that, man. Mm-hmm. That's what's up. I- Thank y'all. I mean, this is such a, like I said, this is awesome because um, we have a lot of people listening, not just fans, but also, you know, aspiring artists and DJs and producers and people that are really out here, you know, grinding for real and, and working day jobs and just, you know, keeping the head above water, but still trying to pursue this thing full time. Um, I do have someone who has a question for you both of you still hanging with us. <laughs> we appreciate you. We know y'all got to get out there and grind. But I do have someone who has a question for you, um, okay. one of our callers. So can I bring him on? Okay. Sure. Okay, so I think this is DJ Shine. This might be. Or air code 919. What's up? <laughs> you live with oh, me in the cut. Oh, yeah, I just wanted to, um, first of all, I want to say that I'm a fan of Chanel. I've been a finish yes. there. Thank you. My, um, my Twitter name is YM underscore DWP underscore Trilogy. Been a fan of her forever. And um, I just want to say that about, what was it? I think it was in 2012 or whatever, when Wayne did the IMC Music Tour. That was when I first seen Chanel live. And I fell in love with Chanel from that day on. I fell in love with her because <laughs> she was, look, she was amazing with her stage present. I also fell in love with Nikki Butts there. That's beside the point. But she was amazing with her voice, like, and 
when I found out that she does choreography for Wayne and all the dances and stuff, it just blew me away. So I started doing research on her and stuff and her sister and all that, Danny Duchesne or whatever. And I just really fell in love with Chanel as an artist at and as a person because I found out that Chanel was real about what she does and how she carries herself. So it just really turned me on to her music, and um, I've been rocking with her ever since. Seen her again. I appreciate that. And oh, no problem. You know I love it. Like, my name on Twitter is Chanel says because I love Chanel. Like, oh, I mean, so, oh, hey. <laughs> yeah, I it's see, me. I see you every day. <laughs> every day. No, that's dope. Know, that's dope. I tweet out her lyrics and everything every day because she really, I really love Chanel. It's been love. I appreciate that, and I and I, I really appreciate you holding me down for the year for since 2012. It's been a long time. I will I it's will not let you time. down. I'm gonna keep running until I pass out. We we in Look, this thing. That's all I have. <laughs> that's all nice. I have. Yeah. And um, they told me I hope y'all kill okay this shit. You feel me? So no, we I'm just kill. waiting on it. I'm just waiting on it. June, don't let me have no pushback. I know young money, cash money, and they like to push that thing back. So <laughs> I don't want no pushback. We're going to kill it. Yeah, we got this. <laughs> and um, I wanted to ask you, how you feel about this Wayne? Wayne, he just dropped the track, Glory. How you feel about that? Uh, About the, about what? About Glory, the track that Wayne just dropped today? I haven't had a chance to actually get into that. I saw that he did drop something, but I've just been i been working trying to get this project out and going this month. So, you know, I'm just pretty much focused on Chanel and Zaytoven project. I haven't heard it. But, uh, but I, look. I, I, might, I might give my comments on Instagram or Twitter during the week. And um, so with this remix of T-Pain, how are you looking forward to this this whole atmosphere that you're going to create with T-Pain? Um, I'm, I'm just hoping that people love it. I mean, I know he brings a whole other fan base to me and Zay. So, <clears throat> and the fact that he just, he really loves the song, I just hope that the visual, um, the visual that we give you guys and, and, and T Pain's involvement just just captivates three different audiences. That's all I'm that's all I'm hoping for. Nothing nothing too much because I, I I like to be surprised when okay. when great things happen. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to this video, the whole the whole project. I'm really looking forward to it. Man, that's dope, man. We we really appreciate you calling in, brother. You know, no it, it's always love where we get to t- connect the audience member that's really a fan with the person that they're a fan of. You know what I'm saying? Right. My man yeah. said he don't want no young money pushbacks. He ain't having that. You know what I'm saying? He's ready for the project. <laughs> 